Well, welcome back to another session, Rumination with Andrew. Thank you so much for joining me. And I am very privileged this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whenever you get this video, to join you one more time to discuss a very important topical matter. And this morning, we shall begin with post Hurricane Beryl that pummeled the island of Jamaica and other islands too, because I'm seeing that the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, I think it was called Union Island, a particular island or city or parish, not sure, I've never been to Grenada, but that section of Grenada, not Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines was battered, right? Was really pummeled by Hurricane Beryl. It seems like the entire section of that uh, of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, that are, it's the Union Island, has been devastated. That entire section of the island has been devastated. And people were giving their testimonies and they were talking about flying cows, right? Just about everything that the wind could have, you know, flown into the air, um, it did, right? Fly into the air. And that was what was happening. It was a frightening experience. People said that they had to sleep on zinc and do it with, you know, sheets on top of it and cockroaches were running over them. It was a horrific experience and our prayers go out to these people in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, right? Particularly the, the section of, um, is it Union, is it Island, Union Island or, yeah, something of the sort. Right. Um. Sorry for forgetting the name, but I think it's called Union Island. Now, for those of you who have the resources, the economic resources, um, you could reach out and see ways in which you could help the people because that is catastrophic. Everything has been lost. In fact, for the first time in my lifetime, have I ever seen leaders or political leaders crying publicly? when the governor or the, you know, um, the councillor, the mayor, whatever he was, when he went to witness what had taken place in that section of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, he was really, really bestruck. He was really, really flabbergasted by what he saw, by what his eyes were actually witnessing, right? And he really, after greeting his colleague, his political colleague, he you know, openly cried, right, because of the devastation that he saw on that island. Something that really, really um, is, you know, thought uh, is something for us to be concerned about. Now, we shall be looking at Jamaica. Yesterday, you know, Hurricane Beryl pummeled the island of Jamaica, particularly the southwestern section of the island. I think also some parts of the eastern um, island, like, you know, Portland, um, was also impacted. But what I saw in, in Hanover, in Westmoreland, in the Grill, the Negril era, even, you know, in St. Elizabeth, it was disastrous, right? We could see the disastrous effects of Hurricane Barrel. Now, just a few thoughts about the hurricane that I'll share on this video. One, you know, thank God we had TikTok, right? Because TikTok, you, the people were able to show us what was happening in their individual parishes, homes, villages, communities, and that was very good. And you had people who were very productive on TikTok. And, you know, I saw this Jamaican person who seemed to have had training in meteorology, and he was really explaining, looking at the geographic map and, you know, and on the radar system that they study, that these meteorologists study, and he was able to answer questions uh, posed by Jamaicans in Jamaica and those who were abroad, because, you know, you had persons suggesting that they were calling their loved ones and they could not reach them, and they wanted to know what was happening in that particular section of Jamaica. And that was very good, you know, that we could be using social media productively. That was a productive, and that is why social media should remain as it is, right? You're going to have the good, the bad, and the indifferent. We cannot control and begin to police people's actions and their thoughts and the way how they be comport themselves, right? That is what we mean by democracy, right? We're going to have the good, the bad, and the indifferent. And that was a very, very good part of the social media that we were able to see. And also on YouTube, but particularly on TikTok, we got very important commentaries by 
fellow Jamaicans who lived in all sections of Jamaica, and they were able to tell us to inform Jamaicans living abroad and those who were in other parts of the island as to what was happening in that in their particular neck of the woods. That was very, very commendable, and I applaud the people who did so. Um, is there any other positive that I saw during that? Yeah, you know, our people are resilient and they were, you know, people were taking things lightly sometimes. And, you know, they were trying to just weather the storm as best as they could. But we've got also to look at some of the negatives that I witnessed, you know, during the hurricane. Now, we understood that a, a hurricane was on its way. Our citizens knew that, you know, that barrel was on its way. And it seems to me that our young people particularly, because they are not so much aware of hurricanes, particularly Hurricane Gilbert, that really damaged and wrecked the island, they took it very lightly and it was not as serious. They didn't take it as seriously as they should. I saw people outside playing TikTok and battling with their, with their you know, um, friends and, and colleagues, right, outside while it was windy, not understanding that hurricanes can change within seconds, right? And when the wind picks up, it can pick up so quickly that it might just blow you away within a second or a sink or some flying object might just hit you and knock you completely out to your death, right? And people were warning, some people on in the comment section were, were warning these people to get inside, be safe, but they were just, you know, behaving as if they were in control of their own lives, their very lives, and that, you know, Beryl was just somebody. Now, you must understand that hurricanes are controlled by supernatural forces. People like to think that it's God who controls these supernatural things. But there are other forces, there are other evil forces that the Bible tells us about in Ephesians 6 verse 13, that we are not wrestling with flesh and blood, right? We must understand that angels that God made and the ones who are, you have good angels and you have fallen angels. And the fallen angels, just like the good angels, are endowed with supernatural uh, abilities and capacities right? They do have those supernatural, that things that humans cannot do, right? And their intellect, their physical stature, and their mental dexterity are so much superior to ours that we cannot even imagine. Our human mind cannot even grasp how superior in intellect and mental abilities these beings are, right? And the devil and his evil minions do have the power to create and to cause hurricanes and other natural disasters. And if we understand, we can see what happened in to Job, right? Go and read the book of Job, and you see that the devil engineered the catastrophes that, you know, occurred to Job and his family, right? So the devil does have an ability. So do not blame God for all of the natural disasters that we see. He permits them right? But they're not always coming from him. Now, we could say the time of the flood that God sent that, that storm, right? The flood that, you know, that destroyed the world, the then known world, known as the antediluvian world, right? God himself sent that natural disaster because, you know, the peoples and the people there, the back, the antediluvians, their sins had reached to high heaven and God was no longer going to tolerate them and their wicked deeds, their wicked actions. So he destroyed them, right? So that came from God himself. So, but we must be careful when we talk about, oh, it's God, it's God who sent the hurricane and stuff like that. We don't know, all right? We don't know who is sending it. We can only pray and we can only take precaution. Now, another thing I've noted is that Jamaicans no longer respect the fact, that's so I'm going into that, that these natural occurrences are not to be played with, right? You ought not to play with an earthquake or a hurricane or a storm or whatever natural disaster or occurrence that might be happening, you know, wherever you are, right? You ought not. You ought to be, it, it, it should be a moment of solemnity, as it were, of prayer, of trying to reach out to God and asking God to save you from such a disaster, right? 
You need to do that. I remember in, during Hurricane Gilbert, I mean, we have so decayed as a society that I remembered, you know, our household, we joined hearts and hands together in prayer, especially when we saw that the storm had grown in intensity, right? But in Jamaica now, people don't care. They are outside trying to video to record the disaster because they're getting clicks, right? And they're getting more views and they're putting their lives in peril, in danger, right? That is what I saw there and that is not good. You know, the young people or young people also are so much ungodly that, you know, every other word that comes from their mouth is also expletive right? You have to be using all the cloths that, you know, and it was just very, very sad to hear and to listen when you hear our young people expressing themselves, right? And they're almost defying the authority of God because there's a young man who was on the outside yesterday on, on TikTok, battling with his friend on TikTok, right? You know what you play, it's almost like gambling, it's a digital form of gambling, and uh, you know, he was just calling as the wind began to grow in intensity. He was just calling on the name of God for no reason, right? And he wasn't calling on the name of God respectfully, right? As he's saying, save my soul. But how could even God save your soul if you're on the outside defying the act of nature, right? We understand that nature is more powerful than we are. That's the one thing we need to understand. When you look at water, for example, and you look at the fact that when you go to the ocean and the power of that, of the water, and when it's forces, when the waves beat up on your body, it can make you fall. You really wonder that we are nobody. Human beings are really nobodies. We are nothing in the sight of God. We're nothing e even in the sight of nature. When we think about the wild animals, a lion, a tiger, a bear, and if we come in contact with these creatures, right? Creatures that were made in fear to Allah, but because of sin and because of our deterioration, we are now in fear to them in many ways, apart from our intellect, apart from the fact that we can reason. But you really wonder, many of us are not even reasoning because sin has destroyed our capacity to think and to reason that we're not even much better than the animals, right? But the fact that they have so much strength Right? If a lion should claw us right now, right, or the bear or tiger, we would not be able to escape if we do not if we don't have like a machine gun or something else to to um protect the these wild animals with. So we have to humble ourselves, right? We are not as powerful, we are not as important as we think we are. And Jamaicans forgot that yesterday, that they are they were up against a powerful Category 4 hurricane. There was a foreigner there. I'm not sure what country she's from, but she apparently lives in Jamaica. And she was trying to, you know, understand Jamaicans. And she said that Jamaicans don't take anything seriously. I mean, she was not criticizing us. She was even saying that that would be a strength, that, you know, in spite of hardships right we tend to laugh at everything that's what she was saying jamaicans laugh at everything even bad things and they try to turn a bad situation into good now from a superficial standpoint from a superficial vantage point it looks good and it seems like that is how we cope right it's a mechanism of coping with the hardships that many Jamaicans have to endure, that many are confronted with. However, you really wonder if that also could be contributing to our crime and violence and our, you know, sense of aggression or a spirit of aggression. Because we, as, you know, um, the saying goes, the dictum suggests or inter intimates, kin um, ti kiba heart bond, right? So it means, therefore, that we have been suppressing our thoughts, suppressing our pain, our agonies. And then because we suppress them, then we begin now to take them out later 
um, on someone by killing them and be by being aggressive. I'm not sure because how can we have a society in which at one point, you know, you laugh at everything and then by, you know, the split, the, you know, what should I say now? In a split second, right? In a split second, in the twinkling of an eye, right? You have somebody murdering their neighbor the same person with whom they were laughing and with whom they had a jolly time. I mean, that is something that cannot be explained. It is inexplicable, that sort of occurrence. But, you know, that's who we are as a people, right? We laugh at everything, but we have to take things seriously also, right? We just cannot laugh at everything. We're not monkeys, Right, we can't just start with just laughing monks, just laughing away. We've got to take things seriously. We've got to use our brain to think, so we can solve our problems. We can't just laugh our problems away. No. We can't laugh our problems away. We've got to work and to think about, you know, pragmatic solutions uh, in terms of resolving the problems that we face, that with which we are confronted. Right. So this continuous laughter is not good. I'm not suggesting now that sometimes we, we don't have to laugh. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's best to laugh. But after you've, after you've laughed, right, if, you, if you've if you laughed when you hear a storm is coming, is on its way, yeah, you can laugh. It's a sort of, you know, hope. It's a coping mechanism. Fine, I don't have a problem with that. I do that sometimes too, and I do that often too. But after that two minutes of laughter, you've got to put things in place. You've got now to sit down and think, what am I going to do to mitigate the problems, right? The destruction, the havoc that this storm or this natural disaster um, might wreak, right? So this is something that we have to do. We can't just sit back and say that we are just laughing all the time and we're having fun, right? We must seek ways in which we are going to deal with our problems. So that's one of the, of the things I've observed. I think that we have become so much of an ungodly society that we do not recognize the importance of prayer anymore, the importance of solemnity, moments of deep reflection. And that's what the hurricane should do. Should you sit in your homes and you should be reading your Bibles, you should be having moments of deep reflection because it could be your last time on earth. People have died, right? And also people are losing their entire um, life and livelihood, right? Look at the, what happened in Union Island. If I, it's, it's Union Island in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, right? And the fact that people have lost everything, their homes, their possessions, right? And I'm sure they would have lost their jobs because they have to be um, relocated to another area. So it means that many people would have lost their jobs, Right, this guy said that the only thing he was left with was what he had on his his his, his body, on his on his, on his, yeah. He said that there was nothing else that he had. He had the same clothes that he had. He had on the same clothes for two days, I think he said. Right, a citizen of Saint Vincent and the Grenadines from the the island of the the, uh, the Union Island, yeah. Something that we've got to really take abreast. We we have got to take into consideration, right? Um, the Gleaner is reporting that there have been some damages, and we're saying here that UN unlocks four million to help. That's four million US dollars to help Jamaica and other Caribbean countries impacted by burial. The United Nations has announced that US four million dollars will be made available from the Central Emergency Response Fund to kickstart humanitarian operations in Jamaica, Grenada, and Saint Vincent and the Grenadines in the wake of Hurricane barrel and we wonder what is this that they will do we cannot depend on the united nations right especially what we saw what happened in haiti and how they dealt with the haitian people right and the fact that they introduced cholera into the island right and that their soldiers raped a lot of the haitian women i don't think that there can be any way in which we repose or trust and confidence um, with the people from 
the United Nations, right? You can you you can, you're free to do that. Because, but you know, if you're reading your history, even recent history, you'll understand that the United Nations does not have a good name, right? It does not. It's it has lost any um modicum of its reputation. Now, Hurricane Beryl devastates St. Elizabeth and Manchester. So these areas are Hurricane Beryl has left trail of devastation across the southern parishes of Manchester and St. Elizabeth, where infrastructure was severely impacted by the system's strong winds and driving rain. Member of Parliament for Southwest, St. Elizabeth Floyd Green, described the situation as complete devastation, noting that a number of people have lost their homes. Further, he said a significant number of people in all communities across the constituency from Treasure Beach to Bowery Hall have reported losing their roofs. That's catastrophic. <laughs> and this is what um, Floyd is reporting. From all the reports I have received, we have taken a most devastating blow in St. Elizabeth from Hurricane Barrett. Significant numbers of roofs being lost, houses destroyed, trees uprooted, light poles downed, almost all roads are impassable. Going to be an extremely long night, he posted to social media platform X late Wednesday. And X is the form of Twitter that used to be called Twitter. So we have seen where, so they say Barra's eyes, Barra's eye wall brushed by Jamaica's southern coast Wednesday afternoon. So, you know, I, I saw devastation also in Montego Bay, in um in Hanover, right? In Hanover and other areas of the south, southern Jamaica. Do we call it the southwest Jamaica? I think that's what it's called. Yeah, so we pray for them and we hope that people who can help, the Jamaicans are willing to help and other members of the international community uh, who are willing to help, you might get in touch with the authorities to see how you can forward your help. Now, we understand from the greater also that hurricane warning for Jamaica has been discontinued, so that's very good news, all right? And hurricane barrel begins to move away from the island. Um, we understand that U.S. Jamaicans in the U.S., Jamaicans in U.S. standing by to assist with recovery. So we have here, that's very good, that the Jamaican community in North America is being mobilized and placed on high alert to assist recovery efforts in the island in the wake of Hurricane Barrel. Jamaica felt the brunt of the weather system on Wednesday as its eye passed just off the south coast, damaging properties and infrastructure in various sections of the island. Now, one of the things I would like to appeal to our authorities is to remove all the bureaucracies that exist for, that will probably perhaps prevent our people in the US, uh, the diaspora in the US and other parts of the world from getting supplies to their families. Could you please remove the bureaucracies? We're hearing that there's just too much bureaucracy and people sometimes cannot get basic items through customs to their to their family members and loved ones and to even friends and you know and other people that they would like to help right and that is not good and it seems to me that because the country knows that that's a, an avenue of making money of having people's you know palms be greased that the government is doing absolutely nothing to deal with that situation because it's a situation that has been recurring and has been ongoing for so many decades Right, and we don't seem to have that tenacity, the will, right, to change the system so that the assistance that people are sending to the island can reach the people that are in need of these items and supplies, right? So I'm appealing to the authorities to ensure that even temporarily that you remove the bureaucratic rules and regulations. I have been to the, 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 the customs once and it was horrific. It was a horrific experience, right? It was like passing through the worst ghetto that you know anyone could ever pass through, right? It's like, well, you have to bribe, you have to do all of the processes. I said, I would never want to ever come back. I would not even want to send my worst enemy through Jamaican customs. It was a horrific experience, right? That I would never, you know, desire 
to repeat. And the government of Jamaica needs to spend some time and need to um, deal with that matter, to improve that, you know, um, horrific uh, aspect of the Jamaican experience. Now, um, what do I want to say now? There's something else that I need to get this away from, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, so these are the, my thoughts on what happened um, during the during Hurricane Beryl, right, that lashed our island. And I thought that I would share these thoughts with, with you, hoping that our people will understand that these storms are sent by supernatural forces and powers. So there's no way that you're going to play with a storm, with an earthquake or with whatever natural disaster you know, thankfully, we get advisories on hurricanes. We don't get any advisories as far as earthquakes are concerned, but we get advisories as far as earth as as hurricanes and storms are concerned. So when you hear and you get these warnings, right, you need to get in in, in place, right, and stop playing with what you call Mother Nature. But these are there are forces behind Mother Nature that you call Mother Nature that can wipe you out, right? That can wipe you out because these are beings that are much more superior in intellect, in physical capacities, in all four shapes and forms than we are, right? Much more superior to us. So we must understand that we are not within that dimension. Their power is outside of our ken. Human minds cannot begin to grasp how powerful these beings are. And we're talking about God, and we're talking about angels that God created. So imagine, imagine God himself, who is all powerful. These angels are, are that mighty and that strong, that powerful. Imagine the power and the magnitude of God himself, who made them. Right? So let's not play with these natural disasters, these natural occurrences. Shall we not? Now, that is what I have to say um, this morning, this afternoon. Hopefully, you, I have not left out anything. I must say I join in expressing my sympathies with um, all Jamaicans who are suffering at the moment. You know, many who have been displaced, their possessions have been lost, have been ruined. I really, really... My thoughts go out for you and my prayers are with you that things will improve as quickly as possible. Right? Thank you so much for joining. I hope that you will like and you will share and subscribe. And I'd like to see you um, subscribing and also liking the videos so that the videos can be shared with many people on the platform. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you in another video.